So this is the second video of the CBT series that I'm doing. Just to give you a little recap, the first video we did was on CBT for OCD. You can check out the video right here. In the world, 6 out of 10 people are suffering from depression and it's not an uncommon disease clearly. And we've all heard about depression but without wasting much time, let's get to the point. What actually is depression? So there are two types of depressions. Now endogenous depression has internal reasons, things that are happening inside your body. One reason could be a genetic disease because depression does travel from genes. So it is possible that if someone in your family had depression, you may have it too. Another reason could be a disbalance in your hormone level which can also cause depression. Now the next type of depression is exogenous depression. The reason here is external. This is triggered by something that happened to you. For example, if you lost someone you loved or if you got fired from your job. That may be an event that was not happening inside your body but externally and it pushed you to a limit that your brain got depressed. Although the reasons could be easy to point out sometimes and difficult other times, but regardless of which type of depression it is, depression has one thing in common. It always makes you feel loneliness. They feel really empty. They feel like nobody cares. And if you're telling them to shut up, you're telling them, okay, you know what? Actually, nobody cares. So please listen to them. Try and help them. One way is to distract them, but you don't have to tell them, okay, you know what, don't think about it. There are ways of actually distracting them and we will get to that later. But to anybody listening to this, you never know what's actually happening to a person. So please be kind. And another note to anybody hearing this, depression is not sadness. I have seen so many people quote I'm so depressed right now. Oh my god, this is so depressing. Okay, this is the reason why people don't take depression seriously. Depression is a disease which has literally killed people. And when you start using it so casually, like just because, oh my god, my pizza was so depressing today. You can't say it like that. Just because you didn't have a good day does not mean you're depressed. There's a difference. You could be sad. You could be depressed. Both are possible, but both are very different. Depression's symptoms are different from sadness. Sadness just makes you feel bad. Sadness is a mood. Depression is a disease. And depression has really negative thoughts. Suicide is one of them. Self-destructing is another one. Sadness does not want you to give up on your life. Sadness wants you to give up on the day, perhaps, but not on everything. So when we start using depression so casually in our conversations, the people who are actually suffering from depression have a hard time recognizing it. So the best way to deal with this is actually understanding what depression is. Please, please, please Google depression, read about it, read about its symptoms, read about how it can be tackled at home also. And part of which is the CBD that I'm going to start now. So if we have busted two myths already, depression is not sadness. You can't just casually say you're depressed, please. And second thing, toxic positivity is an enemy. Please don't be toxic positive. Be helpful positive. Toxic positive is when you say stuff like, like Oh, you know what? You'll get over it. It's just a day, bro. It will pass. Stop thinking about it. Stop talking about it so much. And this is the worst thing that you can say to someone who's actually suffering from depression. When someone's depressed, they feel nobody cares. And when you tell them, don't talk about it so much, yeah, you're literally telling them we don't care. So you're actually doing what you shouldn't. And most of the times, depression feeds on that. You know, there are different types of depression. There can be mild, moderate, clinical, a lot of different types of depressions, but they all make the person feel very alone. The person starts feeling like they are isolated, nobody cares. Their existence does not make a difference to anybody. And that's the feeling that we're trying to deal with here. So, they are feeling empty inside and 
they're trying to ask for help and sadly there comes a phase in depression when a person stops asking for help if someone breaks down in front of you just listen just be there and we discussed you know the first type of depression is actually triggered by a cause like you know someone can be depressed because they did not clear an exam or someone can be depressed because they just broke up so this is the kind of depression where you can pinpoint that this is why they're depressed and you can actually help them get over it but again there are certain times when even you know the patient does not know what's wrong like they don't know why they're depressed they don't know why they feel so negative or empty inside so in that case you can't really offer them a solution but at the same time you can still listen try to hear them out try to know what they're going through in their head and know they're not overthinking stop saying that and here's how you can identify if one of your friends or your family members is depressed now these are some of the most common symptoms of depression but i want you to note in the very beginning that some people don't show any symptom at all and that is why you have to keep in touch with people so that you know when something does look fishy but for everyone else you can see the common symptoms of depressions right now number 1 lack of sleep or too much sleeping for example if someone was sleeping 6 to 8 hours every day and suddenly well 6 to 8 hours is healthy and suddenly they've started sleeping 10 12 hours or maybe they're not sleeping at all insomnia it's a symptom of depression second could be eating way too much or eating way too less and that shows in weight gain or weight loss and the third thing would be negative thoughts a lot many times when a person has those thoughts in the beginning they may not act on it but with time the impulsiveness to act on them increases so if you are noticing any cuts on their wrist or any form of self destruction that they're doing Yes, talk to them about it. They may need your help. Another symptom is substance abuse. People when they're going through depression, they start feeling very empty on the inside. So one way they deal with the emptiness is they try to get them materialistic things, you know. They'll like the lack of happiness on the inside. They'll compensate it with external happiness so they might start partying too much they might get too busy in their work or they might start drinking they might start smoking things they don't usually do and substance addiction is a symptom of depression another symptom of depression is they get angry pretty soon so you know someone they've always been nice and sweet and friendly but suddenly they are getting irritated at even the smallest things like th- like things you haven't even done and they are already irritated on them you don't even know what's causing this depression this makes them snap on everything that goes wrong so if you're noticing someone who's being really unreasonably irritated these days probably you need to ask them why another common thing is they lose interest in everything they do everything their friendships their family their job their usual things that excited them they are not really excited anymore and the lack of interest is a warning sign this is a big red flag because if this lack of interest starts from one thing then it's not going back to zero then it's going to extend to other things in their life so if they were today not interested about their job as depression grows and grows on them they may lose interest in their family in their friends also soon there comes a point when they lose interest in being happy soon comes a point when they lose interest in their ambitions and soon comes a point when they give up on living and that's where one person decides to end it all because they feel that nothing is worth it anymore and you can help them realize that things are still worth it and if you're noticing any of these signs please 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 watch the whole video you can help them get better and if you're not noticing any of these signs it's possible that someone still may be depressed because depression is pretty smart like that you know someone suffering from depression learns how to hide it for some people they look extremely strong on the outside they look extremely happy they're always laughing what could go wrong in their life you know 
and those are the people who are probably hiding it and they've mastered how to hide it and for those people you can't find these physical symptoms these obvious prominent signs of depression but that's where you need to talk to people regularly even if no one you know is suffering from depression you know you can't really know that because sometimes even the person doesn't know that but communication is an essential key because that helps you understand a person so when they start behaving oddly you can always point out like hey you're not being you and that's where helping them begins because that's where you start making them themselves again so please communicate with the people you love stay in touch with them that's the first step of defeating depression you know something's wrong if you know the person if you don't know the person you can't really point out hey you're not being yourself these days so please communicate and now we'll start the cbt a good psychologist will always tell you to watch your diet during any mental disease in depression particularly you might want to start eating a lot more dry fruits walnuts in particular are very good for your mental health you should ideally take a bowl of walnuts every day even if you're fine you should take that much every day another thing you might want to add is chia seeds they are also good for your mental health two things you might want to cut down on is alcohol and any sugary aerated thing so you would be required to totally stay away from alcohol cigarettes or any drug of that sort and you should limit the sugar intake in your diet one exception to this is there's a good news in depression your mind actually needs more dark chocolate and if you're someone like me because i love dark chocolate eat more of it dark chocolate actually helps in boosting the happiness hormones inside you and other than being a very good <clears throat> phrodisiac it also helps in making your mood a little brighter so yeah stuff all that dark chocolate right away the second thing on your cbd should be increasing physical exercise running in particular is one physical activity that almost every psychologist i met recommended they recommend 30 to 45 minutes of slow running or fast running depending on how much you can do every day and there's a reason behind it running or any physical activity really boosts your mood but why they recommend running in particular is because running is something that comes naturally to humans we as humans have evolved to be hunters you know we used to run long distances on land for water for food so essentially that's a part of our evolution and that gives us more survival instincts one part of depression is your disinterest in life on a whole so when your survival instincts get activated your interest in life and living starts coming back so yeah pick up running and go for a 45 minute jog every day you are not going to like this one reduce your social media usage of course your online time does make your brain go offline a lot of studies have showed that we as humans are generally happier when there is lesser comparison social media just gives you a platform to compare your life with everyone and a lot of researches have been done on this i don't know if you've realized this or not scrolling endlessly actually doesn't make you feel happy you waste your time you've done nothing productive and at the end of the day you feel very empty you feel very bored so why not adopt something that doesn't at least bore you and reduce your online presence and particularly for patients in depression your psychologist would ask you to reduce your phone usage your digital usage and you have to focus on being more offline than online Now this is a very important part of your CBT. Every week you have to find one day which you will dedicate entirely to nature. You have to find probably a new mountain to hike or go trekking somewhere. Or if you live in a city where there's literally no nature, you can just find a city park and surround yourself with greenery. 
humans in general are more creative are more happy when they are surrounded by nature so that's what we're trying to do here give yourself the natural pleasures of the world and you'll see a constant improvement in yourself the next thing you know what you're not going to like this one also okay now i know in the beginning of the video i bashed everyone because they use sadness for depression i bashed everyone because i said nobody knows how to deal with depression and yeah mostly they don't but every time your parents tell you to sleep on time they're not wrong your lifestyle has a huge impact on your mental health your brain functions at its best when it wakes up on time and sleeps on time and if your sleep cycle is improper then obviously your mental health will suffer change your lifestyle like give it a 180 degrees turn and totally transform it really really look at your sleep cycle please sleep on time wake up on time even your psychiatrist would need you to do that and yes that does make a difference and while you're at it here's the fifth point before you go to bed you have to stop using your phone at least 1 hour before that a lot many times people use their phone on bed and the minute they shut it that's when they go to sleep you have to make a proper sleep hygiene your phone screen emits blue rays which can actually hinder your sleeping pattern so to keep your sleep in place so 1 hour before you go to sleep you should switch your phone off and the same applies after you wake up point number 6 You know they say how you handle the first hour of your day determines your entire day. Well, yeah, they're right. So, this is what you need to do for the very first hour of your day. Make a schedule that you're going to do these things and do not use your phone for just 1 hour. Now, how this helps a person in depression is they are at a position where they're not interested. But if they're forced to daily note down the few things they have to do in a day, they will have a purpose throughout the day this would give you goals for the day you would work for them and in the very first hour you would not be distracted so if you're active and you're working in the first hour you're more likely to continue that throughout the day the next part of your cbd is doing your swot analysis you have to write down your strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats the whole purpose of doing your swot analysis is to understand yourself better to know what are the things you're good at what are the things you can be good at and to make sure those things increase now how you do your swot analysis i have already covered that in my cbd for ocd video so just go and take a look swot analysis also gives you a purpose which is the main thing missing in depression once you know your weaknesses and your threats you now have the purpose of converting them into something positive But remember this the biggest role that anyone could play in your CBT is you alone because you have to force yourself into fulfilling your purpose into executing your goals This is the most important part of your CBT you have to talk you have to talk to someone about it you have to constantly channelize your feelings outside pick any one person it doesn't even have to be a person pick any one medium you can write about it or you could choose to just write it down and burn it away whatever you want you have to just put it out in a material way find the way that you'll be expressing yourself you can sing you can dance you can play an instrument or it can be something as simple as just going to a friend and talking you have to constantly let everyone know what you're feeling whatever it is even if it's a very very negative thought you have to tell someone what you're feeling about it and now comes the magic trick this is an interesting thing you can do at the end of every day just before you go to bed tell yourself three things you are thankful for only three you know it can be anything like i'm thankful for my job or i'm thankful for my family three things you have to tell yourself those three things and it can change every day it can be that today i had a good burger anything 
you have to tell yourself three things you are thankful for for the next 21 days and the reason why we do it is you have to constantly remind your brain why life is not as bad as it seems in depression it may seem like life is horrible and that it would never change so at the end of every day you just have to remind your brain life is not all that bad there are good things and after 25 days your brain actually gets used to finding good things this is a way you can restructure how your brain thinks because in depression your brain gets so used to thinking negative that now we need to force positive thinking into it and now this is something i want to tell everyone who knows someone who is depressed please read more actively about depression if you want talk to psychiatrist like i did that's how i know about it just actively try to understand your mental health always encourage a conversation on it this world would be a much nicer place if everyone was just kind to one another hear everyone out if you're watching this i want you to know there are certain things in life that happen when they do and maybe it doesn't make sense right now you hate your life for being that way because right now you feel life has no point no purpose you don't even know why you're going on and i know inside your head the world looks just as dark as the screen you're looking at right now but the world is a beautiful place i want you to wait and watch this world deserves so much more than quitting there are these islands in thailand where they have the most spectacular sunsets there is this beautiful tulip field in netherlands there are black sand beaches in iceland there are huge weird caves in vietnam there is so much beauty there are these beautiful himalayan villages in india whoever you are wherever you are there's a huge world outside waiting for you i want you to wait and watch hey there are so many beautiful kind strangers in this world you are yet to meet I would want you to wait for that story to begin. These CBT videos, they are just an attempt to help you get better. If they work, brilliant. If they don't, it's okay. Not all hope is lost. We have psychiatrists, psychologists. Please ask for help and you will find it. Do not think of it as a weakness. A sickness is not a weakness. You are sick, you are not weak. You will get better, you will get fine. Please don't let your mental disorders win. This is a beautiful world. I'll want you to wait and watch it. I'll want you to give yourself that one effort. I can promise you things get better from here. And I want you to promise me that you will wait and watch.